She offered me secrets and conflict instead of resolution and communication. Greetings, guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Monette, and this is my channel, Evolve with Monette. I am dealing with an asthma attack that has been kind of going on. It could be COVID long. I would suggest you speed this up for your listening pleasure, because when I listen back, I can't even stand it myself. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me. I did not just run a marathon. I did not just run up steps. COVID lung is a real thing. I had COVID a couple times over the last couple years, and it totally changed the composition of my breathing, and it pops up in weird times, and we have barometric pressure drops here where I am, and thunderstorms that are rolling in, but this is on my mind. I have this message for you. <clears throat> I've taken my inhaler three times, so there's nothing else left for me to do except to power through it, but the work never stops, right? She offered me contradictions and complications and silence and no solutions. She offered me confusion. I'm talking about an ex that was pivotal in my life. You know, people talk about a villain arc, a villain era. Well, my ex-wife <laughs> began that life for me. And I put wife in quotation marks. We were never, ever married. But we were married. <laughs> Y'all know how that goes. Especially if you're in the LGBTQIA community, you especially, especially know. Especially if you're part of the L <laughs> or the B. You know how sapphic love bombing happens, actually. The U-Haul is a stereotype for a reason. Yeah? <laughs> in any case, I was always in her hunting season. I was always someone to compete with, to gun down, to berate, to talk about. I have been heavy with the energy of that past connection. I don't know why. Sometimes you will get spiritual attacks and people come to me and they have questions and I have answers and that's my job. But I'm a human here too, not just a shaman and a quote unquote high priestess. I am experiencing life just like you. And so that means I've had heartbreaks too. And I've had wins. And I've had triumphs. And I have fallen down again and again. She offered me conflict and confusion. And the way that I feel to express this in the midst of not being able to breathe is so that I can metaphysically seek relief. Because I think that everything that happens physically has a metaphysical connection and there's a reason that I can't breathe. There's a reason that this elephant is on my chest. <laughs> Roll tide, the crimson tide. There's a reason that I feel this weight. It's not my body, it's other people's hate. And that's something that my angel said, you need to speak on it. Because there's other people that had exes that left them with that confusion. Instead of offering communication and solutions, they offered silence and competition and conflict and illusions. And so we're going to heal this today. They said by the end of it, <laughs> my breathing should not be so belabored. It should not be so heavy. And that I may be able to finally drift off to sleep. Because I haven't slept this night. Because I've been in a spiritual battle for my life. It's interesting when you're ascending how you can tell energy is coming at you from different directions. And the direction it came at me from today was the past. Behind me. From a relationship that was never built to last. But that was built to shape me to put me into my Thanos energy so that I collect all of the infinity stones <laughs> so that I could snap my finger and turn things to ashes ashes to ashes dust to dust 
you know you are a phoenix when you rise like us. We rise from those ashes. We rise from that confusion. We gave ourselves answers. We gave ourselves clarity without ever having to speak a word to the ex that dare try us, the ex that would never dare speak any truth. And those exes do that to have the last vestige of power over you. And I put it to bed and to rest years ago. I answered the questions. I got the downloads. I figured out the mysteries. I knew things that she would never want me to know. I knew things that her hoe would never want me to know. I knew things that her family members and her hating ass friends would never want me to know. I knew things about their family. I knew things about their lineage. I knew things about their medical history, their health. I knew things that would make her want to wretch. But it wasn't for me to throw in her face. I never spoke a word of it to her. I just got out of Dodge as quickly as I could get. Years later, it's been three years, and for whatever reason, the energy is heavy because energy is shared. I can't teach a thing and not know that I am not subject to the thing to help me grow. So this is not just my ex. This is someone else's ex out here too. And I'm not telling you to have you weepy or nostalgic. I'm telling you so that you can fortify yourself as we need to do. Protect your energy. Because some ex is still trying to poke through. Still tempted to touch still wants to explain their size, still wants to pull you back in to the undertow of their riptide and their bullshit. And I will not have it. So I've been fighting it on your behalf tonight and on mine. I have been sitting here holding time, reviewing time, and now it rains. Here comes the rain again. Falling on my soul like a melody. Probably not the right words. Belinda fact check me. Y'all say hi to Belinda in the comments. <laughs> Belinda has been a loyal subscriber. And she fact checks me. And I love people that live in integrity. One of the things that I love about her. Is that she likes me. And I like her. And we've had friendly conversations and rapports. And even done a few readings. But she has no problem telling me if I've got something wrong. And not to be mean. It's just to get me back on track. And it's because she wants to see me succeed. And so she has my back. I value that kind of honesty and non-yes man energy. I value the non-people pleasing of it. I value the straightforwardness. I like when people shoot from the hip. And so Belinda, I tip my hat to you today. Thank you, boo. All the way out there in Texas doing what you do. I appreciate those fact checks. I really do. I really do. It's keeping me not only honest, but helps me balance. Because sometimes I get to channeling and talking and words just come out. And they're not factual about the statistics or something. And that's never my intention. So, guys, never be afraid to admit when you're wrong. And never be afraid to be humbled by someone who comes with their heart in their hand with good energy. Belinda, I don't know why, but your angels want you to know how loved you are today. Thank you. I really appreciate you for that. And I imagine that you hold other people's energy and have their back in your life too. Back to the exes and the work that we need to do. Someone offered you confusion and conflict and silence. The ex that I dealt with fancied herself some version of Stevie Nicks. Probably the coked out, uh, drug addled, drunk, polyamorous, badly done version of Stevie Nicks. There's a poster that Stevie shot and she's like holding herself in some feathery thing and she's looking at the camera and away from it at the same time, almost quivering. And if that personified the energy of anybody that was my ex, always wanting you to feel like there was some secret and that there was something that she could never get off her chest. It's no coincidence that I can't breathe. Something that she can never say. Some secret that couldn't be seen. And the truth is that she was quite uninteresting. It was the same thing over and over again. She ran the same playbook because she was not really that smart, my friends. <laughs> and the person that tried you 
did the same thing too. They didn't have any new tricks and they couldn't help elevate you. So they kept you going in an endless loop. The labyrinth would never end. They never wanted you to come out and find yourself and see the sun again and be able to breathe in deep and be able to set yourself free. Because the only power they had is when they kept you on replay and repeat on bended knee, stepping and fetching for their shenanigans. That's the only power they had. And even as I'm talking to you, I feel the thing breaking up in my chest that I don't even know how it got there. I don't know what it was, but I can take a deeper breath. So the truth is being said. God, my angels are so good. I will tell you guys that you had someone playing reindeer games with your time and your energy and had you running in circles and it was the same playbook. Let's confuse, let's conflict, let's not answer, let's talk shit, let's ignore, let's deflect, let's pretend, let's project. You know the game that the narcissist plays, you know the game that the covert plays, you know the game that the toxic person that is not mentally balanced plays, and listen, there but for the grace of God go any of we with a mental imbalance or two or three, right? But what we do, empaths, is we take responsibility for our lives. Life. We go to therapy. We check in with the bestie. We communicate with our spouses. We communicate with our sisters, friends, lovers, whomever it may be that is next to us and undercovers or not undercovers. We try to set ourselves free through our words. But that's the very thing that was restricted from you. Someone did not want you to be heard. And they knew that you had talking to do. They knew that there was an elephant on your chest. They knew that if you said the words that you had to say, then you would no longer be playing second best and second fiddle to their fuckery and their dastardly ways. So they had to keep you going right round, baby, right round, like a record player. Because that's the only way they could keep you down. That's the only way they could keep their thumb on you. And keep you under their foot. A knee to your neck. But I'm here to tell you that we break out of that. That that is not our destiny. That you are not supposed to stay there endlessly. I miss nothing. (laughs) One of my California clients is reaching out to me right now. It's so funny. As I'm talking, I'm thinking about her to a certain degree. So, shout out to you when you see this. Um, I don't know if... Hold on one second. Let me see. I'll have to check. Energy is shared. I was thinking of you today. When you hear this, you know exactly who you are. About words and confusion. And I was thinking of me, too, as I've been dealing with the spiritual warfare. But you specifically... Uh, so we'll talk shortly, I imagine. (laughs) In any case, what I will tell you guys is that you had someone that played in your face and it really gave you so much good and juicy energy. You now understand what that looks like to any degree. You know, there are times in my life in the last several years where I thought, am I overreacting to someone's behavior? That wasn't my ex at all, but they reminded me of my ex or they triggered me. And I thought of Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. I think today in England, it's trooping of the colors. I don't know why that came up to me. That's another thing. And there was someone that was shot at the trooping of the colors. There was an attempted assassination of the queen, I think. I'm having some vague things, so anybody can fact check me here, not just Belinda. (laughs) But there is some correlation to that. Someone wanted to shoot you in the back. And what I mean by that is they planned a counter and a covert attack. And they were mounting an offense against you. And they were talking about you. And they were creating subterfuge and smoke and mirrors. And they were trying to ruin your image. Trooping of the colors. Horses and freedom. Horses representing freedom. Angels, what is the message here? Someone thought that you were dumb is what I just heard. 
someone thought that you were actually not bright. Someone didn't realize that you are of the light, you are from the light, and that you are shown the light. What I was saying is in the past few years, I've had several instances with different connections where I was triggered because someone reminded me of my ex, whomever I was dealing with, whether it was a friend, a soulmate, whatever the configuration was, and I would examine it because those triggers are there for a reason. I started out saying that the way that we were betrayed put us into our villain season, yes? And that's a necessary place to be. It's Queens of Swords energy. This is strictly business. But see, things are not always strictly business. And we are challenged as empaths and earth angels to love again, to engage again, and to have friendships again. But what do you do with that energy if it reminds you of an ex that was toxic? Or a friend that was toxic? Or a situation that derailed you? See, I can't afford that and neither can you. And that's why those experience happen, experiences happened to remind us completely about the way that we need to move forward and conduct ourselves appropriately. And what I mean by that is pay attention to those triggers and to those red flags. It doesn't mean that everyone is a big red flag. There, are, there will be people that will be sent to you that you have work to do. And there will be people that will be sent to you that don't even realize that they're triggering you because you may not tell them all of the things none of us ever do. That's life. It unfolds as it happens. But I paid attention. And those two things that my ex trafficked in, that she delighted in, confusion, silence, a level of stonewalling, I don't care if you're gilded in gold. These things make me take hold of my soul and run. Because... I spent so many years going around and around in that labyrinth on that merry-go-round and in that circle of fuckery that I just can't afford to spend that kind of time with anybody ever again. Communication matters, but even more important than communication, shooting from the hip. Belinda does it. So I appreciate her. She's, and I have a parasocial relationship, yes? And so that means that she watches me and we interact when we do. And if there's a reading that happens, that happens too. But she could very easily play it safe and never correct me. But I respect the life out of her because she does check me. There have been people that have disagreed with me recently. Gosh, I think it's silver eyes. Uh, life has been lifing, so forgive me. I did not forget about you. In fact, you just came to my recollection regarding the Harry and Meghan video, so I think I'll address it here. And if you ever happen to hear it, then you've heard it. But Silver Eyes, I don't know which gender you are, so I don't want to misgender you. Not in, <laughs> not in, um, uh, especially our month of pride. But Silver Eyes, I believe it's Silver Eyes. Correct me again if I'm wrong, happily checked me on what he or she felt was my ingrained bias regarding Megan and Harry when the thing happened regarding the uh, chase in New York. And I had an immediate visceral reaction that it was BS. And what happened was the rest of the world kind of caught on to that. Not my reaction, but it seemed like the collective held a reaction. Authorities came out. Even the cabbie said this, that, and the third. But the point that was very salient that Silver Eyes made to me was, you don't like Megan. And maybe you don't like Harry. And you might be being too harsh to kind of like blanketly state that they're just absolutely lying and that this chase never happened, which is not what I was stating. And I would have loved to have had a moment to clear that up and go in depth. And that should be another video made. But I was talking about what the headline said. It was like, you know, harrowing, you know, car chase, two hours, blah, 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 blah. And I was essentially talking about the logistics immediately about how that couldn't be. But what I loved about that exchange is he, he or she, whomever Silver Eyes is, disagreed with me. But they did it respectfully, and they were honest, and they weren't kissing my ass, and they said, look, I love your channel, I'm here, I'm, I, I enjoy this, some of the content, but on this one I have to disagree. 
And I couldn't have been happier to have that exchange because it was rooted in honesty. I think the reason that I relish and drink that in so much is because of those exes and those terrible, dastardly people that played in our face and that gaslit, that didn't give straight answers. So even if a disagreement's happening, if you're coming with your heart and your hand and your own facts, even if ours do not align, then I'm going to treat you with respect because you are a kindred soul energy of mine. I was really grateful for the pushback. Because it is important to not just live in an echo chamber. Maybe that's something you guys need to hear today. That everyone doesn't have to agree or think your way. But in your face, they do not get to play. Now, Silver Eyes did not play in my face at all. It was a direct communication, and I appreciated it. It was mad respectful. And I tip my hat to you, whomever you are, sir or ma'am. <laughs> really loved the exchange that we had. And I still didn't fully agree. But man, I love the way that that person approached me. I really respected it. If you are honest, <laughs> which is all that we're seeking as people that have been through what we have been through, it's all that we can accept. We cannot even take subpar energy. We cannot take people that want us to see through smoke and mirrors. It is repulsive to me. It's strong energy that I feel. And it may not even have anything to do with whomever's in front of me in that moment, but it's about the ordeal that I went through. Trauma and PTSD is a thing. And until you've been through what a lot of us have been through with people gaslighting you, you'll never know what it feels like to have it done after you've done the work. You just can't tolerate it. She offered me smoke and mirrors and confusion and conflict. Never an explanation, never insight and clarity, just more <laughs> word salads and nonsensical misnomers to conflate and confuse me. Because if I could ever see the forest for the trees, she knew that I would forge a path with my machete of truth, cut myself out of the thickets and into the light, and I would set myself free. The same would have happened to you. And that's why those that trafficked in narcissistic energy would never just say whatever their truth was, whatever their agenda was. It was all manipulation all the time. And for we empaths and intuitive people, that can become exhausting. It is not how we are destined to spend our lives. But we are allowed at certain junctions in our life train wrecks that derail and do not go right, that may impale us with a memory that sears into our skin. And even if they remove the shrapnel and stitch it up again, we never forget the impact and what we learned, my friends. And that is what I want to leave you with today. You are empowered to decipher, discern, disseminate, and if need be, to walk away. It is not your portion to be repeatedly treated in a way that makes you feel off kilter or gaslit. It is not your portion to not be heard. It's not your portion to be dismissed. It's not your portion to be steeped in confusion. It's not your com it's not your portion to be lied to repeatedly. It's not your portion to be gaslit. So as these new connections come in and out of your life, for those of you that are entering to new relationships and you've written me, congratulations to you. I'm proud of you and the work that we did, but the work that you do. My God, the work that you do, the work that you did in the quiet of the night when no one was there and no one was treating you right. When you were going through a dark night of the soul, you did that. I am always grateful for the gracious thank yous and letters I get. But you all know that you did that. It was just you alone in your bed, in your life, on your couch, in your room, living with what felt like impending doom because dark nights of the soul and spiritual ascension feel like hell until you break through the roof of the clouds 
and you can see so well. And that sight, that foresight, the ability to see out is what that dark night is really all about. It teaches you to be one with your senses. It teaches you to be one with your surroundings. It teaches you to know if anyone is ever trying to get over on you. And you don't have to have a 10 bullet point justification sheet like you used to. We empaths had a tendency to over explain. Yes, I still do sometimes. But what I know is what I feel in my heart and my mind. And that's because I have a wealth of knowledge and a database of which I did accumulate the information that keeps me safe as I move forward. You can't turn everybody away, empath. Everyone is not out to get you, but we all are organisms that do what has made us successful. And not all of us have worked through our toxicity, and not all of us have healed our pain, and not all of us have worked on our communication skills, and not all of us are capable of standing the rain. You have done so much work to escape deep, excruciating pain. So trust yourself and know that you will find friendship, soulmates, lovership, spouseship, familial connectionship again. It is there for you, but trust your instincts because that's why they took you through that dark night. That is why they let you have the train wreck, and that's why they let you live in the, lab the labyrinth without light. That's why they let you bump around night after night, because what they were doing was testing your metal so that in the future, the level and depth of betrayal would never again be your plight. You can hit the eject button at any time. It doesn't matter what the other person intends it matters how you feel. And that's not something my empaths are used to hearing. But I'm going to keep it real. You take care of you first. The law is to self-preserve. Put your mask on first before you help anyone else. And my sweet empaths, we've had it backwards for years. We're taking everybody else's mask off the shelf. Meanwhile... Quite literally, as you heard how I sounded when we began, it was us who was suffocating. And now it sounds much different. My angels never lie. When they said, get on here and talk, and we will clear your earways, <laughs> I was like, yeah, what sense does that make? I can't breathe, and I have not been able to breathe all day. I was on the phone <laughs> a few minutes before this, sounding like I was climbing Mount Everest, just sitting still. And I listened to them. And they have given me the placebo, a magical angelic pill. Me talking cleared my airways and my chest. And I think that's the final wrap up of the lesson. My angels do it the best. You need to speak your truth, no matter what elephants on your chest, no matter what anxiety you're steeped in, no matter how much you're triggered or, or feeling like someone reminds you of an ex, whomever. You're still supposed to speak up because that's the sole work that you signed up for. That is your endeavor. Having agency over yourself, knowing when something does and doesn't work for you. And knowing that whether someone means to or not, they might be triggering you. And you're not there to debate with them about that. You're there to take your power back and move about the cabin freely. Take your power back and see if it's something that you guys can collaborate with and work on. And then sometimes, like you did with the ex that offered you confusion, conflict, and silence, you might deem them a terrorist, <laughs> right? And we don't negotiate with terrorists. But you get to decide your soul, your heart, your throat chakra, your crown chakra, your pineal gland, your heart chakra, your sacral, your solar plexus, your root chakra, your body, your choice.
So lift every voice and sing the empath anthem, (laughs) which is not just let freedom ring, but let our truth sing out clear, clarion clear, into the nights that are dark, into the light that is bright, into the hearts of men and women that might want to give us a fright. Let us sing and speak our truths when we're triggered and when we feel like it's the last thing we want to do. Because as you can hear by my much clearer breathing, it will literally be the thing that frees and relieves you. So good sharing energy with you guys. Come back and join me next time and we will continue to evolve together.